Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 13 for the 5% series where we try to take a bit of a laid back approach to which players we can choose and it's based on who are the popular players and I tell you how good I think they're going to be and if you only pick from players in this system then I think you'll do all right and you'll have a good chance of finishing top 5% globally which means you'll do all right in your mini league. You won't win the whole thing but you should do all right. And as we go through it, there are different pages for each of the positions. And the first player you see for each position is the most important one. And I'll probably keep reiterating that as we go along. And if you think things look a bit different, it's because I've finally got round to getting a standing desk. So I'm going to record this one standing up to see what I think of it. Hopefully it's, it's all right. <laughs> all right, let's have a look at what happened in game week 12. Then we'll look at game week 13. In game week 12, the important keepers, Flecken got 9, Henderson 7, Raya 6, Pickford 6. The less important keepers, Fabianski 6, and that's all. For the important defenders, Pedro Porro 14, Gabriel 6. The less important defenders, Saliba 7, Mikolenko 6. And then the least important defenders, Vanderberg 6. Regarding the midfielders, Salah 13, Saka 13. The less important midfielders, Bowen 7, Johnson 6, Sun 6. And then the least important midfielders, they didn't do anything at all. Regarding the important forwards, Kuna 16, Jackson 12, Watkins 7. The rest nothing. And the least important forwards, Solanke 5. And that's all. So when I say most important, least important, that's to do with how much they're going to hurt you if you don't own them. So any of the players on the screen now, if they've got a good score and you didn't own them, it really wouldn't have affected you. Wouldn't have affected your score. It might have affected you emotionally, of course. Goalkeepers. Ray is the most important goalkeeper. So if you could have any keeper in the system currently, it'd be rare that you want to go for. But he is quite expensive at 5.5 million. And clean sheets are so weird to try and guess at the moment. Any old keeper that plays is kind of all right, it seems, at the moment. And then Flecken, because he's so popular... He's the second most important keeper. So if you can't afford Raya, then Flecken's all right. Sanchez is dropping in popularity, it seems, a little bit. And I know he's not that popular with some Chelsea fans. Pickford, I personally really like. Uh, 4.9 million. But away to United, then week after next, he's got Liverpool. So not great fixtures, but he's all right. None of these you have to move on. If you've got them, they're fine to keep. Henderson, 4.4 million. Not been great. Ipswich next week. Basically, any whatever keeper you've got, if they're playing, that's fine. You can just keep playing that keeper. And then the less important keepers, as in less popular, sells at home to Ipswich. Reasonable chance of a good clean sheet there, I'd say. Fabianski, he's bench fodder, but he's now first choice. And he's actually my only playing keeper. And he's all right. He's had clean sheets the last two game weeks. And he's only 4.1 million. But if you've got him and he's on your bench, that's absolutely fine. Martinez, 5 million. Fabianski will hurt you more than Martinez will. And he's 0.9 cheaper. So definitely don't buy Martinez. But if you've got him, he's all right. Then Ward represents any 4 million keeper that's not playing. So for the defenders, Gabriel, I've marked him as don't buy. He's actually a good player, but he's currently marked as being potentially injured. So we don't know that he's going to be playing this game week. If when you come to do your transfers, he's not flagged. He's absolutely fine to get in. If you've got him, that's great. He's probably going to play. It's just that we don't know. So if you buy him, you've got a risk that he's not going to be playing. If you're wildcarding, and it's quite likely none of you are, but if you are wildcarding and you get in Gabriel, that's fine. Just make sure you get at least three other defenders that are going to be all right. Then eight, Nori's nice and cheap and he's popular. Wolves have a nice run of fixtures coming up. He could get one or two clean sheets, but he's got more chance of getting an attacking return. Then Pedro Porro, he's growing in popularity and it's quite feasible. He doesn't particularly do anything the next few game weeks, but if he does and you don't own him, then he is going to hurt your rank a bit. Then Gvardiol, although he's dropping in popularity, that's probably partly because they're away to Liverpool this game week. He is quite good for attacking returns and at some point Man City will start getting better. They had a clean sheet for... Most of the game last night, but they still managed to let in three goals at the end. But there we go. But anyway, Gvardiol's all right, but he is quite expensive. If you have neither Gvardiol nor Gabriel, and you're going to bring one in, 
it's probably better to bring in Gabriel. Then Masrao, Man United, reasonable chance of clean teach there. Home to Everton and Forest, two of the next three. Virgil van Dijk, not worth buying this week, probably because they're home to Man City. If you're wildcarding, you could buy him, but generally you wouldn't bring him in just now. And then Robinson, because he's cheap, lots of teams have him. And when I show you these players and who's popular, I'm basing it on around the top million rank, as in all the teams in the top million. And I'm also laying for how many are benching them and how many are actually likely to pick them. And I'm allowing for transfers in and transfers out. So there's a bit of guesswork here. But I'm reckoning Robinson's probably going to be the seventh most popular this game week. Way to Spurs, but he's nice and cheap. And then the less important defenders, we have Canati at 5.4. Nice and cheap. Having him might allow you to get other players you want. Saliba, so he's good. He may well get nearly as many points as Gabriel or as many. And he's playing. He's fit. Six million. But Gabriel has probably got more chance of attacking returns. Trent Alexander-Arnold's currently not flagged, so he's likely to play. If you've already sold him or you don't have him, he's not worth buying because the next game's against Man City, who are almost certainly going to score. But after that, if you're swimming in money, he's fine to have it. And he's now down to 6.9 million. Aina for Nottingham Forest, home to Ipswich. Reasonable chance of a clean sheet there. But after this game week, their fixtures aren't so great. But he's only 4.8 million. Mikalenko's bench fodder. Lewis, massively dropping in popularity and how much... I think he's going to be getting played. 4.8 million though. And he does get to play most game weeks. And when Man City eventually get themselves sorted out, he should be quite good. As in here, get clean sheets. And then Anderson's currently flagged. So don't go buying him. If you've got him, you might be all right. But they're way to Spurs. So probably not a clean sheet. Probably no attacking returns. So if you've got him, you absolutely don't need to sell him. But there's a chance he's not going to play. And he is only 4.3 million. So he's kind of bench fodder anyway. And then these defenders, none of these are going to hurt you if you've not got them. They really don't matter. But just so you've got a choice, Van der Berg, bench for the 4.1. Fails, 4.1. Of course, they're going to get a new manager. Greaves for 4 million. He's, I think he's still flagged, but I'm not sure. Howard Bell is 4.1 million. Burn, 4.4. But I wouldn't go buying him. They just let in two goals at home against West Ham. I don't think he, was, he wasn't playing that game anyway. Conza 4.4, he was out, I think, injured last game week. Van de Ven, he's out injured for a while. So if you happen to have any of these defenders, they're almost certainly going to end up on your bench this week anyway. Regarding the midfielders, Salah is currently the most important player in the game. If you've got him, great. If you haven't got him and you can get to him, it's worth getting him because if you don't have him and he does well, he's going to really hurt your rank. Palmer is also very important, as is Embremo. All three of those players are good players. A lot of people are currently selling Embremo so they can get in Saka, who is also a very good player. But as things stand, I think even for this coming game week, if you have neither Embremo nor Saka and they both get the same points, then Embremo is going to hurt you slightly more. But after this game week, I suspect Saka is going to be causing you the most pain. But anyway, these are four very good midfielders to have. Rodgers is all right. Away to Chelsea this week, then at home to Brentford, home to Southampton, which are very nice fixtures. He's only 5.4 million, which is one of the reasons he's so popular. So he's worth having. I've not marked him as a green player. I'm aware some managers are selling him, but he's perfectly all right. And then Fernandez, finally on the first page for midfielders. He is a good player. Two of the next three at home to Everton, at home to Nottingham Forest. Very nice. If your four or five midfielders that you play are all on the screen just now, then I'd say you've got a very nice midfield. But of course, to be able to afford that, it means you've probably not got Haaland. But that's okay because lots of people are selling Haaland. So Smith throw for Fulham. He's only 5.8 million. He's He was dropping in popularity, but then week before last, he got 11 points. So he went back up, but he's on his way back down again. He's away to Spurs. Spurs just beat Man City away 4-0. And there's something in football, it's a giant killing thing, where if a team outperforms what you'd expect them against a better team, the next game they tend to do worse than their average. So I think there's a chance Smith Rowe could get something at Spurs. Absolutely don't bring him in, but if you've got him, I'd say don't panic. 
Then Johnson, Spurs do have some nice fixtures, home to Fulham. He might be all right. I wouldn't be bringing him in, but he's all right to have. Son is no doubt a very good player. Well, obviously he's a good player. Quite a nice run of fixtures. Fulham, Bournemouth, Southampton, three of the next four. But he's not very highly owned. So if you don't have him and he does well, he's not going to hurt you. Semenyo, don't go buying him. He suspended this game week. If you've got him, he's fine to keep because after this game week, well, after next game week, the fixtures are quite nice for Bournemouth. But if you want to sell him so you've got space to fit in one of the players from the previous page, that's all right. Bowen ticks along very nicely. Not sure if he's quite worth 7.4, but he does often get 7 points or 5 points or 3 points or 10 points. He's quite nice for ticking along. I think one of the reasons people don't buy him, though, is he's West Ham, and West Ham aren't being great. But they did just beat Newcastle at St. James's Park 2-0, so that was good. And then Luis Diaz, always a bit of a minute's risk. If we knew he was playing 75, 80 minutes every game, he'd probably be worth having. But he's low-owned now, and he's playing Man City, so don't bring him in. If you've got him, he's all right, but you might want to upgrade him. And then the midfielders that really don't matter, but have been popular at some point. Gordon, away to Palace. Garnacho, he may end up getting more popular if he plays a very important role for Man United and he does well. But at the moment, you don't need to worry about him. McNeil, massively dropping in popularity. And I suspect in a couple of game weeks after Wolves, the Everton players would just be out of the system. And then Winks, currently flagged. Obviously, don't buy him, but he's close to being bench fodder anyway at four and a half million. And then Dibbling is bench fodder. Dibbling's a very good player, but he's playing for Southampton, and that's not great. But if he was playing for a middle of the table club or higher, then I suspect at four and a half million, everyone would want him. For the forwards, Kuna is now the most important forward. So if you've not got him and you can possibly get to him, it's worth getting him because if you don't have him, and he does well, he's going to really hurt your rank. And he's knocked Haaland down to second place. And I, before the end of the week, loads more managers are probably going to sell Haaland. And by selling Haaland, you should have enough money to get the midfield and the forwards you want because there's enough cheap forwards to let you get good midfielders. But if you want to keep Haaland, that's fine. Personally, I've sold him, but I've left myself open so I could buy him back next game week if I want to. I don't, as of yet, know what I'm going to do for my transfers next week. Jackson's good. I think he's on four yellows, though. If he manages not to pick up more yellows, he's a very good player to have. If you've got him, that's great. If you've not got him, you'd get Kuna before Jackson. But if you want to get Jackson, that's OK. You shouldn't worry about having him. Just be aware you may be missing a game if he gets suspended. Well, you will be missing a game if he gets suspended. We don't know he will get suspended, though. Would... Ticks along nicely, often gets a goal, more than a goal a game at the moment. The next game is at home to Ipswich. But after that, he's got Man City, Man United and Villa, which probably aren't going to be quite as easy. So not worth bringing him in. I think he's not worth selling. If you wanted to move him on to Kuna this week, that's all right. But apart from that, I don't think he's worth selling this week. And then Joel Pedro, he's a new player now because he's grown in popularity He's been back for two weeks. He's got over 10 points both those weeks. And he's only 5.6 million. So if you've sold Haaland and some other noddy forward, doesn't matter who, for Kuna and Pedro, that frees up a lot of money. You can get the midfield you want. And because you're doing all these transfers, that's another reason why we don't care so much about defenders and the goalkeepers. As long as they're playing, that's good enough for now. And we can sort them out if we need to. Isaac is still a good forward, but he's not going to hurt you as much as the other ones on the screen. But they've got some nice fixtures coming up. And then Watkins, 9 million, so he's quite expensive, but he is a good player. But if you've not got him and he does well, he's not really going to hurt your rank. Not as much as any of the other players on the screen. And it's only Haaland that's more expensive. So if you've not got Watkins, probably not worth buying at the moment. If you really want him, you could get him next game week. But... Yeah, I'd, I'd rather have Pedro or Kuno than Watkins at the moment. And then the less important forward, you've got Welbeck, who's more expensive than Jao Pedro. So if you've got him, that's fine, but don't go buying him. If you want a Brighton striker, I'd say get Jao Pedro just now. I mean, you can buy him, do what you want. 
but he's not going to hurt you as much as Jao Pedro would. Solanke is a good player. Reasonable chance, I think, at some point in the upcoming fixtures. But he's not high enough own, owned now to bother you. Raul Jimenez is dropping in popularity a lot. You don't need to worry about him, but he is nice and cheap. Vardy, hardly anyone owns Vardy now. Good player, a lot of fun to watch if you like Leicester. But no point buying Vardy. Calvert-Lewin, absolutely no point buying him. I've marked him as risky, not because he's injured, but he's just not putting away his chances. And in a couple of game weeks, he's going to be out of the system almost certainly. And then Havertz, although he's a good player, hardly anybody seems to own him, which means if he does well, he's not going to hurt you. So you want to concentrate on getting the other forwards. Then Cannon represents any four and a half million forward in the game who's never going to play and they just sit on your bench. So talking of the bench, this is my suggested benching order. First, we look at the goalkeepers. The first keeper you see that you've got, I suggest is the one on your bench, which means your other goalkeeper is the one you play. So any four million keeper that's not even playing, of course he's on your bench. Then I'm suggesting Fabianski would be the one on your bench. Then Pickford, then Henderson, Martinez, Sanchez, Sells, Flecken, and then Raya. Flecken's at home to Leicester. I'm aware Brentford haven't kept many clean sheets, but there are a lot of managers that are going to be playing Flecken, which means, supposing you had Flecken and Martinez, for example, if you play Martinez and Flecken outscores him, that's going to be hurting your rank. So you kind of have to play Flecken. I'm now going to show you all but six of the rest of the players. My suggestion is the first player you see that you've got is position three on your bench, the next one position two, and the last one position one. And if you blindly follow this, I think you'd do all right. If you want to do something different, that's absolutely fine. This is just my suggestion for those who want a suggestion. So Van de Ven, he's injured. Semenyo, he's suspended. Cannon represents any forward who's four and a half million, not even going to play. Then it'd be Winks, Greaves, Faust, Konza, Howard Bellis, Byrne, Anderson, Mikalenko, Konate, Lewis, Robinson, Calvert-Lewin, McNeil, Dibbling. So, yep, I'm saying play Dibbling before you play Calvert-Lewin. Vanderberg, Aina, Vardy, Gvardio, Saliba, Trent. Then we have Virgil van Dijk, Masrari, Aitnore, Pedro Porro, Raul, Gordon, Luis Diaz, Bowen, Smithrow, Rogers, Gabriel, Johnson, Watkins, Welbeck, Solanke, Isaac, Havertz, Jackson, Garnacho, Mbemo, Fernandez, Sun, and Yao Pedro. And regarding captaincy, there's a fair choice this week. Now, Salah, I suspect, is going to be the most popular, even though they're playing Man City. He's very highly owned, and lots of people are just going to choose him because he's the safe pick, and he might do all right. Haaland is still going to be popular. I wouldn't be surprised if he's second or third most popular. So if you've not got Salah and you're keeping hold of Haaland, even though he's away to Liverpool, he can score anywhere. He's all right. Palmer's going to be quite popular. He's an all right choice. Isaac's an all right choice. Saka's probably going to be quite popular, as is Fernandes may not be a popular choice, but he's got a reasonable chance of doing well. So any of these six would be a good choice for captain. Anyone could be a vice captain. If you can't choose two of these or you don't want to cho choose two of these, then any of the midfielders who have, or forwards who are green, they'd also be a good choice. And then regarding the background picture, we're finally getting rid of an old bed we've had for many years, maybe even a couple of decades almost. So it doesn't quite look like the picture, but it's not far from that. So didn't know what picture to do. I just did our old bed, a couple of kittens and a football. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has come out all right, given the different desk composition and trying different things. And I hope you have fun for Game Week 13, and I'll try to answer any of your questions. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>